If your drawings look like this, and you want them to look more like this, or like this, you're in the right place. In today's class, we're going to be going over the basics of poses, and we're going to upgrade your artwork in no time. Everyone, grab a seat. I think we're all ready to move on to drawing bodies and posing them. As we usually do, we're starting with the very basics. We're gonna be building our way up. Now, some art classes at this point like to start with figure drawing. That's some good stuff, but we're gonna be focusing more on skeletal drawing in this lesson. We're gonna be covering figures in the future, so hit subscribe if you wanna get in on that. Are we ready? Ready. You all know how to draw a stick figure, right? Body, arm, arm, leg, leg head. Did I get that right? That looks too simple. No, I think that looks good. Foot, foot, hand, teeth, more teeth, mean eyes. Stop, stop, no, that's too much. Uh, just let me get rid of these teeth. The simple stick figure is our starting point. I do want to make some modifications. I'm going to be putting circles on our major joints. So I'm talking about our arms and our legs, which right now, those look like they're made of one line, but those are actually two lines. They bend at those joints. Hey, I bet my stick man can be your stick man in hand-to-hand -hand combat. You're on. Ouch! Just once, I want something in the school not to come alive and try to attack me. There is another modification I want to make. Humans have shoulders, and humans have hips. Rhinos too. Uh, okay, yeah, I, we, everybody has hips. These are important for drawing the body, so I'm going to add a line here and I'm going to add another line here and then I'm going to reattach the arms and legs at the end points. We're getting to the point where we'll be sketching so we should probably head over to the supply closet. What supplies do we need today? Pencil and paper. That's it. Nothing complicated. Of course you can use anything. Pencils are great because we're going to be sketching and part of sketching is finding the form of a shape, right? Right. If you're sketching a circle you may want to go over it several times. Each time the pencil goes over a line, that pencil line is going to get darker. That shape is going to get more and more definition. If you're drawing digitally, you can use a brush that's designed to look and feel like a pencil. Or you can take any old basic brush, turn down the opacity to maybe, I don't know, 20, 25 percent and use it that way. What's important is having a tool that lets you build up your lines every time you put a stroke down, making them look thicker and thicker. Also, an eraser is always helpful. Back to drawing. Now, to make it easier to see the joints, I like to add the circles. We don't always need those. Once you have a sense of where they are, you don't have to draw them in every time, so you're gonna see me use them sometimes and not use them other times. There is something else I do want you to try drawing at this point. We all have one. It's everybody's favorite bone group. Yeah, that's right. I'm talking about the rib cage. A cage literally made out of ribs. And what exactly is that cage holding captive? Your heart. Is that a metaphor? And your lungs. Maybe your kidneys. Wait, are you, where are your kidneys? They're probably lower, maybe? Should I be writing this down? Ow! That's it. You're going in the rib cage. This is just a placeholder. Don't worry about it. It's not supposed to be accurate or anatomically correct, but it's going to give some depth to your character. I like to make my rib cages like rounded triangles. In real life, it's more ovular. Not a word. You know what I mean, like an oval. It's an oval that's open around the stomach. Listen, we don't worry about the anatomical correctness here. What I want to focus on in this stage is quick gestural drawings, capturing the form. This is where sketching comes into play. I find more circular shapes keep my pencil moving. If my first time around an object isn't quite right, my second stroke is an opportunity for me to find out where I want that line to go. Then on my third or fourth time over the same area, I kind of define where that line feels best. My sketches are a mess and that is okay. Sketching is about getting your idea out. Finished art, that's for looking cool and clean. What's the real reason for drawing this cage made entirely out of ribs? When we pose our character, we're going to be seeing that character in 3D. We won't always be drawing them straight on. If we think of this rib cage as having some depth, that helps us when we start to add things on top of our skeleton. Things like muscles. Things like muscles. I will admit, the rib cage is the trickier part to this. So if you've never done it before, don't worry. Just get it roughed in. Are we ready to start posing? Yeah. yeah! Posing with a stick figure is a great way to figure out what's natural for your character without having to dedicate a lot of time to the details of your drawing. As you get more and more used to drawing this way, what you want to do is create a lot of different gestures. If your gesture looks good, go ahead and draw it again. 
that repetition is going to help you figure out exactly what you're going for. Let's go back to the drawing we used at the opening of this video. It feels stiff, like the character is hanging from a coat hook. Are you talking about the closet incident from last semester? Hey, anyone out there? I'm stuck. I don't know what you're talking about. How do we get our character to look more casual in a standing position? There's a lot we can do. We can bend their back forwards a little bit, make them look more attentive. This has a ripple effect though. You then have to change the leg position to make the body more balanced. We could bend the spine backwards, give them a more confident look. We can also try different things with the arms. Maybe they're folded, or maybe they're on the hips, or even gesturing at something. One subtle thing that you're gonna see in many characters that you should try in your own is tilting the shoulders just a little bit. Our characters are still just casually standing. It looks a little bit more natural when you try this. Also notice when we tilt the shoulders one way, we offset the hip line at about the same angle in the opposite direction. Like the legs, this is kind of a weight balance thing. I'm also gonna make this leg straight up and down. And then I could take this other leg, maybe push it out a little bit. Again, for weight balance. This is a lot to remember. Yeah, it is. I have an activity for you all though that I think is gonna help. This assignment was gonna make learning this a lot easier. Activity. Photo tracing. I like to look for action photos on the internet. And the best place to find action photos is you guessed it. Sports. Balls. Gold. Fields. More balls. Sports. Read the room, dude. We're the art kids. I know, I know, but sports is a good place to start because the action is often so exaggerated. What we're going to do is we're gonna take each of these baseball players and we're gonna draw skeletons over them. So part one of this assignment is to find some photos of people that you want to draw over. I have three photos here. If you wanna use the same exact photos that I'm using, go to the Wikipedia page for baseball and you can download them there. So. Let's get to drawing. There are different ways to do this. If you have pencil and paper, you can print out the photo and then take another piece of paper, place it over the photo and trace it out that way. I'm gonna be doing this digitally. I am going to take this photo and I'm going to dial down the opacity. So I can see that the arm starts there, the other arm starts there. So I'm gonna just go ahead and I'm gonna connect those dots. The other thing that I wanna find is his back, which is kind of bent. It's an action pose and it goes down to the hips. One part of the hip is here and the other part of the hip is there. And so that line is going to go like that. Then I could come in here and I can get this arm. That's pretty easy. Maybe just draw in a square or a circle for the hand. I'm gonna go ahead and get the other hand in there. And this arm is kinda, kinda going like that. I'm also gonna get his head in there. Then I can come in here with this leg, go down like that, make sure I get the foot. The other leg is almost a perfectly straight line from that hip down to his other foot. And then if I want to, I can get some depth here by drawing in our rib cage and try to make it, you know, a little bit three-dimensional there. I'm gonna do this again where I change the opacity a little bit. This one is standing sideways. In fact, we can't even see his other arm. So that line that usually on our stick figure looks like that is actually, we're not even seeing it because it's lined up. We're looking at it from the side. But that back we could see has a slight curve to it. That rib cage, if we want to draw that in here, that gives him some depth. Part of that hip is here. The other part of the hip is here. So we're gonna draw that. And sometimes once you start drawing these things in, you're gonna say, hey, the back, I kinda of got the back wrong. So it's not bad to go in here with a little bit of an eraser and come in here and try to figure out, okay, how did I, how did I get that spine wrong? And it's okay to go in here and correct. That's part of the process. Now I'm gonna draw on his leg, draw on his other leg, 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 foot, foot, arm goes here, arm goes here, and then his hand. And of course, his head, he'll face that way. And we have another baseball player. Last one, just for practice, so you can see how it's done. Let's turn on this fella who's easier to see. I'm gonna change the opacity there, create a new layer, and then let's find that spine. That's pretty easy. It looks like it's, it's just kinda coming down straight down him like that. His shoulders are tilted in that direction. His hips are more in that direction. One ends here, 
The other kind of ends there, which gives us a leg, a leg. That foot is kind of behind. This leg lines up with his hip pretty well. Then that leg goes down. We've got another foot over here. Arm, arm, hand, arm, arm, hand. And what's great about these is as you start to do them more and more, you start to see how quickly we can start to get a sense of the action that our little stick figure guys can have. And as you do more and more, you're gonna to start to see more and more poses out there that you could take advantage of. All right, we have some skeletons. This is a great warm up exercise. My character looks a little too top heavy. Yeah, you'll have that. I, I tend to draw like that too. We should probably go over proportions. Something you've probably heard of before is the seven head principle. How did I get seven heads? Different heads and a different kind of principle. A person is seven heads tall. So if you draw your head and you stack six underneath it, you're gonna have the height of a dude, a dudette, or a pokey. <clears throat> he always clears his throat before making us do math. He probably makes that noise so he has more time to count in his head. I heard that. Head number one is, you guessed it, it's the height of a head. Head two, the shoulders usually fall a quarter to a halfway down that head length. Head three, the halfway point is a good marker for that rib cage opening, that little spot there. What the heck is that point called? Polygon. Cauliflower. Soul button. Okay, now you're just all saying words, whatever. Head number four is the waist. Head five, this is a good place to end your fingertips. Head six, ah, uh, knees, but you gotta move that line up for that to make any sense. Just. Just wing it. Head seven, this is where the bottom of your feet rest. This isn't quite as scientific as drawing a head, but you, you get the idea. You may have noticed that cartoons, they don't necessarily follow these proportions. Are you calling me a cartoon? Once you have the structure of your character in place, you can flesh them out. Add detail, keep adding layers and depth and clothing. What you wanna do first is get that gesture down and then draw on top of it. Wait, I haven't given you homework yet. Here is what I want you to do. Take a drawing that you have done and you thought was pretty good. Then what I want you to do is using the posing method that we did today, try to improve on that drawing. Like I said, this is a great warm up activity. And if you're on Twitter or Instagram, feel free to hit me up. Show me what you're working on. And I'll see you all in the next class.